All right, folks, welcome to the straight red card. Um, rough evening. That was, uh, that was really rough. Um, I, I can't remember when it's been as rough. Maybe a couple years ago. Uh, but something is endemically, systemically wrong, which is ironic because Greg Berhalter's system is all about his system. And if there's something systemically wrong, then there's a problem with the system. Now, you can go ahead and say, well, you know, uh, Pulisic didn't play his best, but how many times did we win possession and Pulisic had the ball, but not a single person to pass to, and as he advanced it up the field, Sargent was actually so deep in the defensive end that he wasn't available to be passed to. Um, so this whole thing about change of possession and attack for Greg, that all failed immediately. And But why did it fail? I'll tell you why it failed. Because Greg's system is, at this point, with the national team, at a very basic level. And so it's quite predictable. It's predictable. I mean, you know exactly what he's trying to do. You know exactly where they're trying to go. They're trying to form triangles. It's so easy to step in the middle of those triangles along the lines and stop the triangle from being successful. Meanwhile, we continue to play out of tight corners when it's pretty obviously we shouldn't be messing around. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a rough, ugly, ugly night. I, I can't think of a single player who actually played well. And, you know, so 60 minutes into the game, um... Burhalter pulls Pulisic. Now, Pulisic wasn't having a great game, but what does it say about your system, Greg, that you have to pull your best player off the field? Because no one looked good tonight. No one looked comfortable as Canada thumped our asses. We lost 2 nothing. It should have been 4 nothing, or f even 5 if it wasn't for Stefan. Maybe Stefan's the only glowing night? Uh, the, uh, the only glowing positive of the night? I mean, that's sad. That's sad. That just means we were getting punched in the mouth most of the evening, which is exactly what happened um, this possession um, this possession based system that Greg wants to play it's so easy to break down with just like simple forward pressure I mean it is simple it's easy for even the Canadian manager to watch video and tape of Greg's system and break it down. It's so easy. So if you can imagine how easy it is for the Canadian manager, imagine how easy it is for, say, Tata in Mexico or even Costa Rica at this point. I mean, we and we've seen, what, three or four games now? with Greg in command where it looked this bad and we were told, oh, just be patient. Ah, just be patient. Man, it's going to get better. You know, once the guys all learn the system, everything will be just fine and dandy. Well, that's the other thing about the system, besides it being totally predictable and easy to defend once you know what it is. How do you incorporate new players into the system if the system is the star of the show 
that pretty much means if you have a player coming up in Europe who's really good at doing this very specific thing, but he doesn't fit into your specific system, then it doesn't matter if that player plays for Frankfurt or Gladbach or name whatever team you want. They're not going to get to play. Not right away and maybe not at all because it's a system based approach. Now a system based approach is something you do at a club level. You do at a club level because you're with those players day in day out. They have a chance to le learn your system and how to fit into it and if it's complex then you know there's time to make that work and there's no time for that when it comes to the national team and national team players especially if they're new ones who are really awesome that you want to incorporate not that there are any of them that got left out necessarily except for the ones that are injured injured Adams Brooks um, yeah Dwayne Holmes coming back from injury uh, yeah, you know the only guy who two guys that might have got stiffed was Alfredo Morales of course he's coming back from injury but he is the only guy with a pair of you know what who would play midfield for us who would tackle and send a message to the opponent and that guy I, I guess I don't I mean he must have been injured you would hope that would be the reason he wasn't included um, so Anthony Robinson might be another option at left back um, you know Blovitz was <clears throat> but the whole team was <clears throat> I mean it was just <clears throat> across the board in general so I think it's time that and, and I supported the hiring of Greg Bullhart. <laughs> I almost said blowhard. Burhalter when it happened. And I said, give him some time. Well, it's been a year. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and uglier and uglier and uglier. I mean, unless you want to watch the Cuba game, that looked great playing against a team that could barely field a team of co uh, competent players because they've had so many defections they've you know things aren't going well in Cuba let's just put it that way uh, for the Cuban national team so where are we at well I'm I'm done for me I, I hung in there all I was asking to see was progress and if we lost games, I just hope that I saw a spark of something developing, uh, some positivity, some sort of positive thing to cling on to, to know, you know, it's going to take time, but this is going to work itself out. <clears throat> well, that time has passed, my friend. Uh, it's past. It's time for Burhalter to go. It's time for him to go. I'm sorry, but the competence level here at this point, my confidence in his competence to run a national team on a scale of 1 to 10 is about 0.5 at this point my confidence of him running an MLS team in MLS is quite high I think he'd still be rather good at it and I'm sure he would get a job offer yeah, pretty soon but he's not a national team manager and, and the ironic thing is I criticized Jurgen Klinsmann for being the exact opposite of Jurgen Klins of uh, Greg Ber Berhalter. Jurgen Klinsmann had no system. He would often say, we train, we prepare, we put the players out there, it's their job to make something, to be creative. 
God, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd almost prefer that at this point, that extreme, compared to the extreme where we are now, where we're a slave to a system. Do you build a national t team around the best qualities of your best players, or do you have this stagnant, chained, just, it's a suffocating system? Because that's what the players look like tonight. They look suffocated, bloated, constipated, confused, upset, angry, distressed, unable to focus. I mean, they didn't even give it their all. So Burhalter can't get his system right and he can't get his players to give 100% and win some of those 50-50 balls? I don't know, man. This does not sound like an inspiring leader to me. He doesn't even come off as one. Uh, in his interviews prior to this match, he came off as kind of a defensive little prick. And now, after the loss, I don't even want to watch that interview because it should be a media massacre and a condemnation of his approach because I don't care who we put on that field tonight you can disagree with Burl Halter's selections from here until tomorrow but that team Canada put out that back four and that midfield that Canada put out we should be able to beat that team with an all MLS Yanks lineup. All MLS. No Polisic, no McKenney. Yeah, no Ream. No Yadlin. I mean, we should beat that team with just MLS players. And we couldn't. And we couldn't. It was sad. Are you sad too? Well, I'm not really sad. You know, it's not like I get sad over this. I'm, I'm just really like disappointed. I'm disappointed in Greg. I'm disappointed. He's so dogmatic that he's. It's all about him that he's such an egoist that it's all about him and his stupid system hey Greg blank your system F your system why don't you just come up with a winning strategy a winning way to play a more a less constrictive quit being a boa constrictor on this team and how about fixing the defensive shape how about that why is our defensive shape such garbage because that's what it is it's garbage and why is our system so predictable that it you are just a barely competent team you can give us a hard time and by the way Cuba is not a barely competent team they're lesser than that they're in the pits they're going the wrong direction I mean, I was happy Zardis didn't start and Trap didn't start, but at this point, I'm figuring it out. It isn't just the fact that you like to play those players who like to, you know, uh, cozy up with you and 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 uh, 
you know, huddle up with you on the cushion, on the sofa, you know, like your faves, Trap and Zardus, they didn't, Trap didn't play either of these games. The problem is your system is too easy, it's too easy and predictable. It's too easy to break down. You just have to watch like, you know, five or six hours of video and you're like, oh yeah, we know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to eventually get space out wide and they're going to cross it. And they have overlapping backs with, alongside the wingers who are supposed to cut in. and Nah, not working. It's just... It's, I mean, I know what you're going to do. I'm just going to make sure I stop it. All right. <clears throat> it's time for Greg to go. I mean, I hate saying things like that. I really do. And I was willing to give it some time. But I, I can't. Just like I did with Klinsman near the end. I, I can't deal with ugly like seriously ugly and bad to the point where I say to myself self if I were the manager of this team could I have done a better job game planning for this game inspiring the players for this game I think think I could have and that's a scary thing to say because I've only coached youth soccer well, who the hell am I well I've been covering the sport for 30 plus years so you know there's that but yeah it's time to go Greg it's time to go Good night, folks.